we just saw is me and my friends opening our A-level results all the way back in 2018. In this video, I'm going to go through my A-level results and summarize a few things which I did which helped me get the grades I got. If you're new here, hello, my name is Ilya and I'm a student at the University of Cambridge and I make videos that can help you with applying to Oxford or Cambridge and A-levels and GCSEs and all that kind of stuff. And I've put timestamps in the description so you can jump the bits of video you want to see. Okay, so I did the following five A-levels chemistry, biology, maths, further maths, and Dutch. I should probably mention I did Dutch A-level because I speak the language already, so I didn't have any lessons for it, and it's basically a free A-level. And if you want to get into Oxford or Cambridge, don't worry, you don't need to have five A-levels. Most people are three A-levels. Some people are four, those are four, usually did maths and further maths. Anyway, I did maths and Dutch in year 12. The reason I did maths in year 12 is because the way my school taught further maths is you do the whole of maths A-level in year 12 and the whole of further maths A-level in year 13. Now, my genius idea was I do maths A-level in year 12 and then drop further maths in year 13. So then I'd have done four A-levels in total and two in year 12 and two in year 13. Unfortunately, it turns out that Cambridge doesn't like it when you do that. They want to see that you could cope with the Cambridge workload by doing all of your A-levels at the same time. So if I only did two A-levels in year 13, that wouldn't look good on my application, which is why I did further maths eventually. So I kind of accidentally ended up doing further maths, but I'm glad I did do it. Anyway, I did maths and Dutch in year 12, and I got an A-star in both of those subjects. And then in year 13, I did chemistry and biology, and like I said, further maths, and I got eight stars in those subjects as well. So in total, I got five A stars at A level. And I didn't make this video just to brag about my results, but to share how I got those grades. So hopefully you can take something away from what I did and improve your grades if you want. I'm going to make more videos about how to get all these stars at A level. So consider subscribing if you want to see them. So I'm going to start off by talking about how I studied in general and then how I study for A levels. So, studying. Never do passive revision. Never. What I mean by that is don't just sit there and read your textbook or blindly copy what's written there. It's really not an effective method to learn and to study. What I strongly recommend is active recall and spaced repetition. Just to clarify, this means you actively recall content and repeat this over spaced intervals. Doing five minutes a day of active recall for a week will be so much more effective and efficient than doing four hours of revision in one day. One of the best ways to do active recall and space repetition at the same time is to use Anki flashcards. These are not like normal digital flashcards because Anki shows you only the cards that you don't know well. And it's just such an efficient and powerful way to memorize content. And Anki is free on both Mac and Windows. Link in description. Unfortunately, I only discovered Anki in my first year at university. And I feel that if I discovered it during school, I would have found school a lot easier. Other ways to study with Active Recall is to, for example, make spider diagrams for memory, or what I used to do for A-levels is to write out or type everything I could think of for a specific topic, and then I'd go through the textbook and check if I'd got it right or wrong, and anything I got wrong or forgot, I'd write out again. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is something which pretty much saved me at A-level. Before I found this technique, I found it really difficult to structure my revision and to stay focused. I've got a very short attention span. What I used was the Pomodoro technique and this simple technique let me study for eight hours a day quite consistently during the peak of exam season. The Pomodoro technique is something along the lines of you study for 25 minutes followed by a five minute break and you repeat this. I used this technique religiously and I can't even describe how powerful it is. And together with Anki, you'll be an unstoppable force. To keep track of my study sessions and break sessions, I used an Excel spreadsheet. And in my next video, I'm going to show you the spreadsheet and let you download it for free. During the breaks, I made sure to stand up, walk around, eat or do exercise or tidy up so that I wouldn't be sitting in my seat all day. So those are my general study tips. Now for my A-level specific study tips. The advice I'll be giving is aimed towards science and maths A-levels, but it's useful for pretty much any subject. Now, there are three fundamental components to preparing for A-levels. First of all, you need to understand the content. 
you need to memorize the content and then you need to use the content. Understanding content, memorizing content and using content are not independent things because you can understand content and memorize it by using it. But what I did was to do it in that order of understanding, memorizing and using. So the first point, understanding the content. What I would do was go through the textbooks that I got from the school and made sure I understood everything that I needed to know. If you want to maximize your chances of getting an A star at A level, you need to understand everything that you need to know. If I didn't understand something in the textbook, I'd usually Google it because there's so many good resources online for free. For chemistry especially, I recommend ChemGuide. What's very helpful for understanding content is becoming familiar with it. When you're presented with a new idea in class, it can be quite hard to understand it immediately, but if you've read ahead in the textbook, just had a quick look, that can really help you understand it. And often things are explained better in a textbook than by a teacher. I only did this for biology A-level because I was trying to do well in the biology Olympiad. And I did find out that it helped a lot for biology lessons if I'd seen the content beforehand. And I didn't do this for my other subjects, but if I had done, it would have definitely helped. Okay, so the second point, which is memorizing content. Once I understood the content, I memorized it. I made sure that I memorized everything that I needed to know. And I did that by going through the textbooks and also going through the course specifications to make sure I knew everything that I needed to know. Although it might seem like a lot to memorize all of the theory for an A-level, it really is achievable, especially if you use the techniques I mentioned earlier in the video. I also found that using CGP textbooks was a great way to revise and memorize content, whilst the bigger textbooks I got from school were better for understanding content in the first place. So once you've understood and learned the content, you need to use the content. This basically means do past papers. It's great if you know and understand the content, but if you want to get top marks, you really need to have top exam technique as well. Unfortunately, at A-level and especially at GCSE, a lot of your performance is based on your exam technique, which is just memorizing the mark scheme. You need to go through the past papers and look exactly at what the mark scheme wants so that when you are in the exam, you can write out exactly what the examiners want to see so the examiners will give you the grade that you want. If you want to know my GCSE results, check out my other video. I didn't get all the stars at GCSE. In fact, I got a D in one of my GCSEs. And if you want to know what grades at A-level or GCSE you need to get into Oxford or Cambridge, you can see my other videos too. Thank you for watching and maybe consider subscribing.